Well, hello, friends. <clears throat> Today, I am a bit curious about um, how many syscalls my different programs are making. So I thought that I would make uh, it possible to see how many syscalls are happening. And um, yeah, so the goal is to uh, have a column here that says syscalls and then just shows the number of syscalls made by each process. Um, so the way that we're going to do that, of course, is by counting the syscalls. Um, and first we'll need somewhere to store that count. So that will be on the process um, object. <clears throat> Perhaps we could have a variable named syscalls, syscall count. Mm -hmm. And let's say did syscall. Um, syscall count. Okay. And then we just have to call this from the syscall. Um, handler. Um, so when we get to syscall handle, we'll just do something like um, current process. So, so current is the current thread. Um, and it's a global that you can access anywhere in the kernel. And current process is, you guessed it, the current thread process. Um, did syscall. So we're going to count these per process for now. Maybe per thread syscall counters would be interesting. Um, to do later, but right now this is what we're going to do. Um, okay, so um, then we will have to um, expose this in the proc file system. So um, the way that the um, process manager data is currently retrieved is um, it all comes from this one file called proc all. Um, which has a row uh, of text for every process in the kernel um, with all these different numbers here. And it's like the PID, the parent PID, the um, CPU usage, the number of times scheduled, um, you know, memory allocations, um, whatnot. All kinds of stuff is in there. And um, what we're going to do for this uh, change is that we are just going to go and edit the contents of this file a little bit. So it's generated by this helper here called procfs dollar all. Um, I don't know why I started using dollars uh, <laughs> for some things in the kernel. Um, some kind of throwback to the old VMS times. Um, so this this here is the um, per process line that we build up. And it's like this, this monster of a printf statement, basically. Um, so we will just tack it onto the end here. We'll say process syscall count. And uh, we'll have to add to the format string percent %u. And um, we, I think we didn't actually expose that yet. Unsigned syscall count. OK. Um, now, this thing is going to show up in proc all, but uh, that doesn't mean that process manager is taking any advantage of it. So the process manager, um, I'll show you, um, is using the, this model view classes that I have. So this uh, widget here is a G table view, and it's displaying the contents of a custom G model subclass. Um, and that's where all of the data for the various uh, rows and columns comes from. So we have to go in the, it's called a process model. Um, this is the data model for this um, view. And here, as you can see, are the different columns, um, a convenient enum. So what I'll do here is I'll just add it to the end of the column uh, list. Uh, we'll call it syscalls. Um, and here is where we store all this, all these internal counters. So we'll just add it here. Let's say like syscalls. Um, no, that's fine. Um, bup, 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 bup. And now let's go look inside of this class. So this is where we actually open proc all and uh, go through it line by line here. 
and this is called I think every one second. Um, so basically what it does is just opens a file and then reads line by line and then checks if the um, uh, well we split the line um, by comma separation <clears throat> and then check that we have enough entries so now we're adding one entry so we'll just bump that here um, ba -ba -ba -ba. and let's see so 16 was the biggest one before right or no hold on 17 18 yeah yeah so state dot um, this is called this is part 17 so we're adding this part here um, and that would be two event we have to convert that from an to an unsigned okay we just assert that the conversion went okay um all right so let's see and now <clears throat> of course we need to do a little bit of um, stuff here to add this column so we need to tell the model what is the name of this column because so far it only has the enum um so we'll just say the name is this calls and um, here we sort of tell it how wide it should be and what the what kind of text alignment we should have. It's the um, it's called the column metadata. Um, so we'll say that it's fine for you to be 60 pixels wide, and um, let's have the text alignment be center right since it's a number. Uh, numbers look better right aligned. Um, and then here this is for the sort. Um, so for sorting, if you click on these different guys here, then um, the table view will be sorted based on this column. But sometimes when you have, say, like a text um, as the content, for instance, then maybe there is um, a numeric representation internally that you would like to sort by rather than the text. So there's a, a special um, data role here for the sort order keys, basically. So um, in this case, the sorting uh, role for the syscalls is just going to be the number. So basically, this is about like giving giving it a n number to sort by a column rather than the string. Um, so this one is trivial. As you can see here, like for the priorities, so the priority uh, info comes in the flavors of low, normal, and high. So we just convert those to numbers here to make the sorting sort of make sense. Because if you did alphabetical sort, it would be a bit weird. Um, and then here, this is the display role for the data. So this is where we decide what to actually show text-wise. Um, and again, just returning the uh, number here is fine, um, or so I thought. Why is this not fine? Is so what we're actually returning here is a G variant. And G variant is this kind of object that can be a string, can be an icon, can be a number, can be whatever. But I think the issue here is that it can't be an unsigned. So. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a bit ugly actually. Um, I don't love it, but I'm I think I'm just gonna actually let it be unsigned then. Um, I mean I mean signed. I'm I'm gonna go with making it into an int um, because 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 I just like that better. Or do I? Do I really? No, I don't. I was just making up some excuse so I wouldn't have to do the thing. Um, it's weird that G variant doesn't support unsigned ints. Should it? Okay. Um, let's make everything. I'll show you gvariant. So gvariant is this object that can be constructed from all kinds of things. Um, and it has like this internal type. And then the storage is just a big union. Um, and it's all about marshalling that type around, uh, or the marshalling that thing around, basically. Um, so 
what did we run into here? Current state syscalls. That's not what we called it. Process modal. Um. Oh, wrong line. Process model row 99. Same thing here. Fix me G variant. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. So the table view class is shaping up to be quite mature, actually. I'm, I'm very happy with it, although something I need to work on is, is inline editing. Uh, I'd like to be able to have, like, um, like if you double click on an entry, for instance, then um, it would turn into a text entry box and you could edit the entry um, and maybe even have custom widgets so that, like, uh, like for a number, it would turn into a spin box or, or something like that. Um, that's functionality that I don't have. It's currently read only, um, but it's it's definitely doing its job quite well so far. Uh, in this case, displaying this here process model. <clears throat> so let's have a look at how this turned out. Okay, now <clears throat> we have this column over here with the <clears throat> rapidly increasing number of syscalls in the Windows server, I guess to be expected. <clears throat> wow, look at that go. Um, I was kind of interested <clears throat> what happens if I drag a window around. Uh, yeah, you can see that the taskbar here, um, it's kind of interesting that the taskbar is getting all these notifications about um, about the window moving around. So the taskbar sort of registers for window management events, and then the window server will tell the taskbar whenever a window moves around, or whenever it changes title, changes icon, stuff like that. So that's what we're seeing here is like all those events. And um, actually, as you can, if you look over here, when I do this, you can also see that the taskbar is using a fair bit of CPU actually when this is happening. So I think that's something that I'm gonna work on um, separately. But yeah, so so this uh, here syscall counter turned out pretty good, I think. Um, I think this will be helpful in um, having a sort of a better overview of what's going on with the system. Um, so let's commit this. And actually, before we do, <laughs> let's um, make the process manager window slightly wider. By default, because <clears throat> I would like it to start up with everything visible. Okay, cool. Um, it's very nice. So let's see what we have. Um, so we are adding the column name. To the model, the metadata with the column width and the column text alignment. Um, yeah, we have to cast an int, but this is a sort order info. And here's the display info. Okay, so here in the text processing part, we bump the number of columns by one. We convert the newly added um, CSV field here to an unsigned and Put it in the syscalls, blah, blah, blah. The enum, the member, okay, making the window at 40 pixels wider here, that's fine. Um, and then in the progress all implementation, we add one field, and it's the process syscall count, which is here. Um, and we have did syscall, which increments it by one, which is called by syscall handle. Um, yep, 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 yep. That's all cool. So, okay, kernel pros, 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 plus process manager. Um, show um, per process syscall counts in uh, proc 
uh -huh. um, just like that. Um, added simple. Let's just call enter to the rock. Oh, uh, contents. Okay. So I. I'm pretty happy with this, and I think this will conclude today's video. So I hope you saw something interesting here, and uh, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.